uh, folder, I did include kind of a brief uh, summary of two, two uh, fruit orchards that we have planted here on, on site. One is the peach block that you pass coming in, and, uh, and then we have an Asian pear study going on that was planted in 2010. Um, I do have a couple data tables in, on that handout, one for the peaches and one for the Asian pear. The third sheet is basically a list of definitions so you can actually understand what all these different columns mean in this, uh, on these data tables. So I'm not going to really talk about this at all after I, after I stop talking about it right now. I only bring your attention to one, one thing in the Asian pear table. The second row from the bottom is a meaningless row, so you can just put a line across that. There was a, a um, <clears throat> European pear that was written in there, and I decided not to include that, but for some reason, only partial data. So you can just put a line through that, otherwise it's, it's, it's a, current, uh, a current sheet. So again, I'm not going to talk any more about those two blocks um, at this time. Um, so anyway, what I do want to talk about, and this is actually an issue that's, that's going on right now, and if, uh, if you're a, a client of Bob Rouse's, I'm sure you're well aware of what's going on. Um, if you're a uh, perennial grower, you, you may not have heard about the virus situation. It's really applying mainly to plastic, annual plastic culture uh, systems, and particularly with plants that were purchased this past fall and planted. Um, there's a virus um, situation going on, and I, again, I just want to talk briefly about that. Do we have any strawberry growers in here, plastic, grow plastic culture growers? Okay, was, is anyone not aware of the virus situation? Yeah. No, okay, so you don't weren't aware of it. Okay, well anyway, yeah, maybe it, it, won't, it won't affect you and we'll go through this a little bit. Uh, so anyway, starting in the, this, past, uh, this past fall, um, and of course, you know, plastic culture growers, you know, they start up in, you know, Pennsylvania, I guess even up into New York and all, and then they kind of, you know, they're planting their plants in August, and in, in Maryland, we're planting them sometime in mid-September, then you get down into uh, North Carolina, they're planting in October. So not everybody was receiving the plants at the same time, and when we first started recognizing that there was something going wrong with plants that were planted this fall, until we got a, a wider view of what was actually going on, we, we, you know, investigations were going on, well, maybe it was a fertility problem, maybe there was a, you know, a toxicity, there was, you know, fertilizers sometimes can get blended incorrectly and you wind up putting on some more micronutrients than, than the plant can take. Uh, it was a pretty dry fall, there were some, some thoughts that maybe it was salt, salt injury, um, and basically what it was, we were seeing plants that were smaller, you know, you get a row of, you know, a couple hundred plants and there were small plants here and there and didn't really fit kind of what you would expect maybe from a uh, nutritional problem. And also we kind of went back and forth, is it a, a fungal pathogen in the soil, you know, and, and so we kind of, and, and some of the symptoms that we're seeing was again, not only the smaller plants, but there was some premature reddening of the older leaves of the plant, which is not really that usual to see in the annual, annual system, particularly with the varieties that we typically plant, which would be like Chandler, Camarosa, and Sweet Charlie's. Eastern varieties, we do kind of see that reddening, but it's kind of a more unusual situation to see that in, in some of these traditional plastic culture plants. So it was kind of wondering what was going on, and, and after we kind of excluded a lot of these other reasons, um, plant samples were sent out to a virologist out at um, University of Oregon, Dr. Martin, and he indeed did confirm the presence of several viruses in the um, in the plant samples that were being sent to him from, from here in Maryland, North Carolina. Again, some of these um, you know, strawberry states had been, um, been analyzed. And so it was basically after identifying which fields had these plants, and they did trace that back to what uh, plant supplier did we get these from. And of course, from there, they can trace it back that there was one area up in Nova Scotia, a nursery uh, production area, uh, that seemed to be where all these plants had originated from, at least the plant material had originated from there. So it was kind of a, a good thing that it was, it, was, it was limited to where this nursery up in Canada um, that this problem came from, but does it make the problem go away or any easier for us that actually received plant material from that? And we actually had those uh, plants um, from the one nursery that did get material from there. And so, of course, we have these plants here on the farm right now. So, um, again, it may not affect everybody unless you, you know that the nursery that you bought them from, yes? What nursery sold these? I believe the two nurseries that were identified was um, Walker Brothers in South Jersey and Aaron Creeks were the two. Yeah, ones. Anybody that got plants from, tips from Battlemore Farm up in Nova Scotia, and there was a lot of them, Mitchell Rand, there's a whole, there's a whole bunch. If you got plants from the North Carolina program, tissue culture program that was grown in North Carolina up in the mountains. 
and came, they're probably clean right. because they do a virus indexing. Right. If you've got plants out of Nova, uh, not Nova Scotia, but out of Prince Edward Island through Cottle, they're probably clean. What happened was there was some matted row strawberry near the fields that they were growing these mother plants, these plants they took the tips in that had these viruses in it. There was aphid transmission and so they, they claim not all the plants that came out of Battlemore, you know, tips have it, but like you show up there, there's two vi viruses. If you just had one of them, you probably couldn't tell there was anything wrong with the plants. If you got two of them, you'll see more symptoms. If you got three of them, you probably got stunted plants that are no bigger than your fist, and we have some of that in some of the fields. Well, that concludes my talk for today. I'm sorry. <laughs> It ruined my Christmas because I usually take December and January off to go play and hunt. And before Christmas, we knew there was a major problem. And I pulled samples from a number of my clients who sent your samples with them away. They all came back with the two viruses plus another virus, which was seed transmitter pollen transfer. Yeah, like, like Bob said, there, there was actually three viruses that, were, that seemed to be uh, implicated in this, uh, the yellow edge virus, the uh, model, model virus, and then to a lesser extent, the necrotic shock virus, which for some reason, my plants and <laughs> other plants have that third, third virus. We don't know, that, you know what, what, what that's all about, and, and we really won't know what, what the ramifications of having all three of those viruses. So these are the symptoms that we were seeing. You can see the, uh, the yellowing. You know, so I didn't have, the, in all my plants at least, the reddening of the older leaves, but I did have this yellow of margin uh, along the leaf margin. That was both in older leaves and younger leaves. So that's really what clued me in, that we had something going on here. And, and literally, it seemed like the, after I that saw that in my field, the next day I came in and sure enough, there was a message from North Carolina with pictures. And I'm, that's when I, I, of course, I called Bob right after that. And if he saw it as well, and yes, and, and it was bad news from there. So, so basically, um, these are well-known viruses. It's not nothing that we didn't know was out there. I mean, these are known, and, and usually through um, clean plant programs that, in, in, at least in the United States, you know, they would pretty much have these identified. And, and like Bob mentioned, if they went to a tissue culture, um, propagation procedure. That's how they kind of clean up these plants. And so I'm not really sure what went on, you know, or the clean plant, how the clean plant programs run in, 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 in Canada, whether it was negligence or it was just a bad a stroke of luck. And like Bob said, it seemed to be a neighboring field that was infected and it moved over into the, into the, uh, into the propagation field. So, so anyway, um, and, and like Bob was saying, you know, if you have one virus, usually you don't even know it. It doesn't express any symptoms, and there's usually no reduction in yield or quality. It's when we get these uh, virus complexes. That mean, just means more than one virus that we start seeing symptoms like, like, like we showed in the picture there. Um, and it's kind of been, and again, I suggested that you might see a, a, a zero to a 30% yield reduction. Um, when you get these complexes. Now with us, with these three viruses, it would really be interesting to see what our results you know, will be after you know, we recrop them this, uh, this spring. So uh, both of the, the two major viruses that we, fought, you know, we see, the yellow edge and the, um, the model virus, they're both aphid transmitted and primarily by the uh, strawberry aphid, although some other lesser aphids can transmit the virus as well. Um, it seems to be the strawberry aphid is the one that we're really concerned with. Uh, the model of virus, um, there is the melon aphid that, that can transmit the virus as well. And that virus actually, um, there's an alternate host, um, uh, lamb's quarter and relatives of lamb quarter can actually be an alternate host, which would be a concern to us, whereas the yellow edge virus, uh, is there's no known alternate host and kind of, you know, kind of stays you know, in strawberries only. The strawberry necrotic virus, it's not um, aphid transmitted, it's transmitted by seed and, um, and pollen, so um, there's, there's little chance that that will be you know, spread throughout the fields. So, um, so basically, if we have it, you know, you know, what can we do? And of course, the biggest threat would be, to, you know, at least from my perspective, is if you have a perennial planting of strawberries in addition to maybe the annual plastic culture system, there would be a possibility that it could be aphid transmitted, you know, aphid vectored into your, your perennial planting. Um, we certainly will not, and we usually don't recommend carrying over uh, strawberry beds from year to year, and, and this would certainly be a case where you would not want to if you know you have the virus in the field, um, you probably would not want to carry over that planting at least this year and, and then maybe start new you know, next year and if you want to you know, try carrying over. Uh, we certainly don't want to get it transmitted into a, the local weeds that we have here because I think once that happens, then we're liable to have that virus for 
um, a long time on our farm. So, so, the, so the bottom line is, you know, we want to we want to control the aphids, and there are um, at this point at this time of the year, at least for our area, it's probably a little bit. I mean, you can certainly go out there and see if you have aphids, and it's, 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 it's quite possible you won't, you know, or, or, or you might. But if you have aphids and you're sure that there's strawberry aphid, because there are other aphids out there, um, that, that, won't, that won't be a problem. But um, there are some pest uh, recommendations. I believe imycline chloride can be used through the drip as long as it's not within 10 days of flowering. That's a nice systemic treatment that uh, could be used. And, of course, there are def defoliar treatments as well. Um, the thing is, you know, we don't want to, you don't want to consider the field loss if you have the symptoms. We don't really know how if it's going to play out, and and if we can expect any compensation from the nursery, which may may or may not happen. I don't know what what they do, but you can't really say, well, I just abandoned the field. Uh, so I don't know really what my loss was other than it's 100% because I abandoned the field. Well, that's not a good reason to ask for compensation. I think you actually have to prove. Uh, that there was a loss, actually, and that only comes from taking it to make sure you do the fertility program, you know, follow all the disease and, and insect, you know, um, control measures, uh, keep everything irrigated, and uh, certainly keep it, you know, frost protected, you know, that you don't lose the crop for other reasons other than what might be a loss um, from the virus. So, of course, the Canadian plant producers are, are aware, aware of this situation, and, and they certainly don't want it to happen. You know, we, we're a pretty good customer base for their, their so, you know, that's the last thing they want to lose is us as as customers, us being all strawberry growers, you know, in, in the U.S. So um, with that, um, if you don't, you know, know that you have it, I mean, for me, because I, I actually got a, a late start planting this fall, and the plants look fine coming from the nursery. Put them out in the field, they look good for the first couple weeks. Because I had a late start, I went ahead and threw my row cover on it to try to increase. So I didn't, wasn't even aware that I had a problem. I went out four weeks later to pull the covers back to kind of do some counts and things. And that's when I saw that yellow edge um, symptoms on the plants and kind of started. So, I mean, it's very possible that if you plant it late and put a row cover on, you may not know you have the prob you know, a problem. Um, so uh, right now it's just, you know, we're going to kind of take a wait and see approach, go ahead with all our practices that we would normally do and see how it shakes out and what kind of information comes. Um, I have a strawberry meeting and uh, it'll be late May this year, a twilight meeting. We'll probably have updates. Um, at that time to see what's going on because things happen sooner down in North Carolina even though they plant later than we do of course they're harvesting sooner than we do so we might be getting yield information coming from North Carolina as our you know season starts gearing up so we'll be able to maybe get some a heads up on what what to maybe expect from from some of these uh, infected plants so that's um all I had for is you know as far as what I want to do today yeah Bill uh, is it it's all I guess right now, but is roguing out infected plants a viable option? Well, what? Mike can rogue out his row or two or when he's got, and I think it'd be a very viable thing for him to do if he was commercial. But a lot of these fields, it's a whole field, it's okay. a whole planting. We got we got on. It got very confusing because uh, some of the people were using some of the. I'm going to say they're not biofumigants, but some of the safer type fumigants, and and we thought maybe they didn't use some mm -hmm. nit nitrate type nitrogen in the, in, in the, the thing so we, we fed them in the fall and they seemed to come out of it but then they went back and some of the others it looked like it was nutritional but it all it seemed if you fed them and took care of them they didn't suffer as bad but then Mike had and then four, four or five other sources I went and uh, five of the sources, if I pulled six samples or four of the sources, all came from uh, Jersey asparagus. They got all their tips from Ballamer Farm. The, the fifth source got its tips from the same place, but it was a different grower. It was Aaron, Aaron Creek. And if you look at their contract with the growers, if they do, the only thing they're going to stand for is the plants. You know, if you have a loss. A, a loss. Yeah. And the only place I've seen it where it's really bothered me is in two situations where about 15% of the plants are stunted. And the question we were talking about as, as you know, we usually go in and clean up the, the plants, take the dead leaves off mm -hmm. and whatnot. And with a lot of viruses like in tomatoes, you, you, if you, you got a virus there, you don't touch them. Yeah. So what's the, the deal there? Now there is a strawberry <coughs> meeting uh, this week, uh, well, mon uh, Monday and Tuesday in Virginia Beach and some of the players from North Carolina are going to be there. 
and I'm going to be down there and, and ask specifically that question. I'll let Mike know. And later in March, and I don't know whether we'll get invited or not, but Mike's going to go with me if we can get an invite. Uh, Mar uh, Martin from Oregon, he was with USDA, mm -hmm. and a bunch of others, and probably the Canadian guys, are meeting down in Raleigh to discuss this whole issue. And I'd like to be a speck on the wall or one on that meeting, and I'll talk with Barkley and see if that's possible. And Mike's already indicated he'd be willing to ride down with me. But this is the second year that we've had problems coming out with plants coming out of that area in <coughs> Nova Scotia. The last year, 2000 and 11, we had Gomeria campari, which is a leaf and fruit disease that came from the Canadian, uh, not the, that came with the Canadian tips, but the Canadian people weren't at fault there. It was the California mother plants from California that had latent infections. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's going to happen, but it, I, my mentor and good friend who has since passed away, Jim Kansas, who ran the virus feed program right. in Maryland, probably doing carpenters because they kept viruses out of the uh, matted row varieties for years just by screening them and with the tissue culture and whatnot. So right. it, it's an interesting world. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It'll, it would be interesting to see, especially if you said that some of the plants responded to improved nutrition, is what happens then when <coughs> the plants start to fruit and you start stressing the plant again? Is, uh, we'll just have to see. Uh, the, the thought is treat them like you're normally going to treat them and see what happens. You've got another, you know, you, you, you take a total bath if you don't. And if you go out and at least try, maybe you're going to have some percentage of the crop. And the literature on these two viruses, if you got both of them, the most, like Mike said, the most you're going to see a reduction yield is 30, 0 to 30 percent. Mm -hmm. We had this third one in, and we just don't know it. Yeah. And at least uh, five or six locations, we know we got the third one. Now, there is no um, harm with humans eating fruit from a virus infected well, I plant. I mean, this is just for anybody you else. Have a variegated strawberry, it's, yeah. it's now a novelty, and maybe yeah. you get more money for it. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I mean of course, that's, now, I don't know what plant, now, if you have a pick your own operation and the plants, the, the foliage looks odd, I mean, is it going to be hard to convince? People the picker that, people hey, you know, to, I don't know. Again, we, again, this is something that we're just going to have to wait and, and play out. Yes? Just blame it on the cold weather. There you go. That's what I thought it was, cold injury, when I first saw it. Yes? Those slides with those pictures, yes. are they available? Can you, are they on your website somewhere? Can you email them? Yeah, I, I'll certainly email you, know, yes. I got, a, I got a copy of the report that came out from North Carolina, or okay. Virginia, actually. Uh, yeah, got Any information you get, yeah, I, I, I sure will. Uh, big uh, plastic culture planting this year. We actually got our plugs from someplace different this year. I have no idea where the tips came from. Right. And we actually, they looked fine. They were healthy when we planted them. And we actually thought we tried a new foliar uh, nitrogen thing from plant food. And we actually thought we did something to the plants by changing the fertilizer. But I think this might be what it was. Yeah. What it is. The, the interesting thing is most viruses, when you see them in the field, are just in spots. This is a whole This is the, the whole, whole field. field. That's why we thought it was something we did with the foliar uh, nitrate with the... Dr. Rains was going to see if Dr. Martin would take some more samples. You know, when is it too late to, I mean, can you take the Wait, tissue that, samples at any time? The, the samples, if... if She's got uh, emails back to Dr. Martin in, in Oregon if he'll do some more samples, and she just hadn't got a response back. But it was a matter of getting some leaves sent out. We potted the plants before Christmas and took them to her because we didn't know when he'd take them or not. We just keep them alive in the pot. And it was just basically some leaves submitted. And I'm hoping, Mike, you can talk with Karen and see if he's still taking some, and then, you know, people can get samples yeah. of the plant diagnostic last year in Maryland. Right. Yeah, I was talking to Dave Meyer earlier. He said he, he noted that he puts out, a, well, the, the extension puts out a, a fruit and vegetable headline kind of thing. And it's mainly a summer issue that comes out, but it kind of covers it. I was talking to him today about getting like a, uh, a special edition put out just to, to address, make people aware of this, uh, this situation. So, um, so that's all I have, again, for that um, particular concern. And it's something we'll, we'll keep an eye on, and, and we'll get information out to you guys um, as soon as we, we get the information. The, the other problem I'll bring up is the resistance in botrytis resistance on a lot of the fungicides. Right. Uh, I know Dr. Guido Schnabel cooperated with us last year. We sent about 18 samples, 
And tops of men in most of the samples came back as totally resistance as far as botrytis. Right. Pristine and some of the other materials have some uh, res resistance. So uh, there, there's a lot of interesting things happening in strawberries. And I'll be glad we get a right. small fruit pathologist that can cooperate. Right. Schnabel's going to cooperate with us again this year. Yeah, that's good. That's good.